I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually like COD Vanguard. And I say it knowing that it's nothing more than a reskin of Modern Warfare, knowing that every animation is recycled, from armor plates to gas grenades. I say it knowing there's a bubblegum MP40 variant with clown puke tracers somewhere on Sledgehammer's shelf, and that Activision will find a way to drain this game of any semblance of gritty realism and fill it instead with stickers, candy, and appeal to children. But I say it because this game is fun. I'm the big bad wolf. Double kill. Oh. Fury kill. Oh, we. Oh, dude, my fucking head just exploded off my fucking body. It's not making any fucking progress. Oh, jeez. Bro. Ooh, double headshot, bro. They're okay, camping in the bathroom spine. like two dudes sitting on the same ass toilet, bro. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot to hate on here. The audio sucks, big time. The enemy player models are laughably bad. The menu music is ripped straight from Doom Eternal and the in-game announcer never shuts up. The gunsmith is entirely over-engineered. The perks are lackluster, the visibility is garbage, and I have no faith that these issues will be fixed before launch. Because we all know what betas really are. Free demos with free publicity. Pre-order now. But the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in Vanguard is crack. I'll start with what I think is one of Vanguard's strongest cells, map design. The single largest contributor to the feel of a COD game, and they nail it. This is some of my favorite map design I've seen in COD in years. It's the tried and true three lane approach, with just the right amount of cover, alternate pathing, and verticality. The maps in the beta remind me of some of my favorites in COD history. The firing ranges and shoot houses, where I never felt like combat was more than a few seconds away, but at the same time, I didn't feel cramped or forced down a lane. These maps are elevated further by Vanguard's destruction system, and while it doesn't hold a candle to the likes of Battlefield, it was pleasantly surprising and really works. New lines of sight are revealed as the match plays out, and you constantly remind your enemies that there's a difference between cover and concealment. And I felt like a total badass every time I shot out the glass and dropped into the fray on Hotel Royal, whose chaotic lower floor gave me the same vibes as the bar shootout in Inglorious Bastards. It almost feels like a western in here. Where's the revolver, by the way? When you combine this map design with a painfully slow sprint out time and characters who reload with no sense of urgency whatsoever, you've got a different kind of COD game. The kind of game where you have to think before you open face peak a high traffic lane. The kind of game where running around like a headless chicken gets you roasted on a spit. The kind of game that rewards game sense and patience over flick reflexes and latency. There are some nasty choke points where you can just feast on players who were too lazy to go around, but there is a way to go around. And welcome back power positions, where you can earn all your kill streaks if you can just make it there alive. And I love that risk versus reward factor, the decision you have to make before you peek the huge no man's land in Gavutu or try to take the high ground on the ship lookout. It's in these decisions that you find deeper strategy in casual shooters. I love how you can choose your own player count in the pacing options. To me, it solves a problem. The problem of, this map is only good in ground war, or this is a domination map. Because in Vanguard, if you think a map is too big for the 6v6 TDM, up the ante, 12v12, or even 20v20, the choice is yours. It's empowering and long overdue. On to the gunsmith, I think I can sum it up with one word. Unnecessary. Honestly, it's overdone. Like a bad steak. Tough to chew on and overwhelming to digest. Like they just threw a bunch of random shit in there to tick boxes off a marketing checklist. I mean, how many versions of a red dot site do we need? And no, that's not a dig on Vanguard's historical accuracy, but personally, I could have gone for a more bare bones approach here. Embrace the World War II theme and trim the fat. Cut the bullshit. I don't need to spend 10 minutes comparing the gameplay differences of which pattern I used to duct tape my handle. Actually, the entire creative class system is just alright to me. It's still a satisfying grind, but not an exciting one. The unlock I looked forward to most was Thermite, of all things, and that was only to counter the overly lengthy throwing animation. The perks are underwhelming too, as all the customization has been ported over to weapon attachments instead. So rather than carefully choosing perks in order to fill a specific niche with a class, it was just like, sure, why not? The gameplay impact of perks is negligible, and the field upgrades aren't any better. Come on, come on, bitch. This thing cannot fucking travel over the snow. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Wow! 
Just pick one and move on. The guns themselves are insanely satisfying to use though, and with this time to kill, everything slaps. Everything except the shotguns, dear god. Your best bet there is to overkill two shotguns, empty them on the B flag, and then die. Cause you'll never get a reload off. The snipers are in a nice spot, fun to use, but awfully map dependent. There are only a few ARs, but with the level of customization offered, they cover their bases quite nicely. Any additions from here would only be more of the same. The LMGs I actually found surprisingly useful, probably because everything handles like an LMG, and the less you reload, the better. All in all, I really enjoyed my time with this beta, and I played it till the bitter end, which is far more than I can say for Cold War. So will I be pre-ordering Vanguard? Fuck no. Guys gotta stop doing that. Though I will say, it's been an interesting change of pace for COD, and I can't wait to see how bad it fucks up Warzone.